Our cells actually change what they do and how they appear depending on what we're thinking about. It's incredible. Look, let's say, for example, you had a, let's say, 10 docking ports on a cell for, a, for neuropeptides associated with the state of feeling irritated, right? So you feel irritated, anxious or something. And let's say the neuropeptides in the brain have that shape. And let's say they find cells in the body that have receptors that are also that shape so they can bond with. Now let's say you keep thinking thoughts that make you feel irritated. You keep feeling irritated and anxious and you do it regularly and regularly and regularly. What actually happens is the cell actually begins to grow more of these receptors. It actually grows and you go from maybe 5 to 10 to 20 to 50 to 100. And what you've actually done is your cells have evolved to cope with the chemicals that have been produced in, a, in response to your thoughts. So in other words, what you think about is actually causing your cells to change. <clears throat> so you're actually changing our, we're actually changing our bodies at the cellular level as we think. Isn't that absolutely amazing? Yeah. And doesn't that suggest, if we can do that, don't we have the capacity to heal ourselves as well? <coughs> if this is a natural product, that happen, a natural process that happens all the time, it's partly, it partly explains the placebo mechanism, how when you take a tablet every day, a tablet is a tablet of hope. Whether, it's, whether the drug actually works or not, in this case, isn't really important. But when you take something, you hope that it works, you believe that it works, and you expect something positive to happen. When you take it on a daily basis, that hope, faith, expectancy produces chemicals in the <coughs> brain which change the numbers of receptors on the surface of the cell, and we actually change ourselves at the cellular level because of what we believe. Incredible. So that's, so that's basically one of the ways that we actually heal ourselves. We change ourselves at a cellular level as we think and feel. It goes, <coughs> even, it goes even deeper than that because inside the center of the cell, your DNA lives. And your DNA is also affected. And it's affected in a very similar way to the cell. Because the, the way the cell is actually affected, I, I mentioned that it evolves. It, it's like it adapts. You know, if I went outside, let's say I went on holiday to a really hot country, right? Not Scotland. <laughs> but let's say I went to a hot country for two weeks. My skin would, my skin would change colour. I would go darker, a darker shade of brown. What's happened is my skin has adapted to its environment, right? And you invite, that's actually what's happened. My skin has adapted to its environment. That's what's happening to the cell, because as I'm feeling irritation anxiety, frustration, because of the way I'm thinking about things, and I'm sending all these chemicals, all these neuropeptides into the cell, and the cell is changing the number of receptors from 5 to 10 to 20, what it's actually doing is it's adapting to its environment, because its environment is now being flooded with all these neuropeptides associated with irritation, frustration, so that's the environment, just like a hot country has an environment of lots of sunlight, and my skin adapts, so the skin around the cell, it's called the cell membrane, adapts in the very same way, because this environment, instead of being sunlight, is neuropeptides associated with frustration, irritation, anxiety, and the way in which we're thinking. So the cell begins to adapt. Its skin changes, you go from 5 to 10, 100, 1,000 surface sites, docking ports, receptors that respond to that chemical. But let's, but let's say that I actually change who I'm being. I change how I'm thinking, and I, I stop thinking that way, and I start to think, Gratitude. I start to notice things I'm grateful for. I start to think purposely think differently. I, I, I complain less and appreciate more. Right? I'm just making really black and white examples just to inspire some thoughts and, and life changes. Because not any of you need to do that. This is stuff you can pass on to other people. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but when we do that, right, what's amazing is just in the same way that we pruned the brain the cells in the brain, we pruned them all back, same happens on the cells. If I went away from that hot country back to Scotland, my skin would go lighter and lighter and lighter. In fact, Scottish people, the skin actually starts out blue. <laughs> it takes two weeks just to go pink. <laughs> and then it goes brown. But, so if I went to a cold country, then my skin would adapt again. Exactly the same on the surface of the cell. My skin also adapts. All those receptors for, a, for irritation, frustration, uh, anxiety, begin to, to pr they get pruned in the same way that you prune a hedge. They shrink, and the number of those receptors shrink down until you're, you're right back where you started. But now because I'm thinking gratitude, appreciation, compassion, any, let's say, positive things, then I'm producing neuropeptides associated with those 
thoughts and feelings, which are now flooding the cell. So the environment is a different shade of sunlight, so to speak. It's a different type of chemical. So what's going to happen to the surface of the cell, the membrane? It's going to adapt to its new environment. Right? So I start to build, let's say I've got five receptors for compassion. Right? It goes to 10, to 20, to 50, to 100, to 1,000. So on, on that very way, <coughs> we actually change our cells at the cell, we change our bodies at the cellular level as we change our minds. Right? It's extraordinary. And I did say it goes even deeper because the same thing happens to your DNA. Because in the centre of the cell contains the DNA. And the DNA also responds to its environment. In the same way that if I was bathed in hot sunlight, and my skin adapts to its environment, and the cell adapts to its environment, which is all the chemicals associated with what I'm thinking about, then information gets into the cell from these chemicals and reaches the DNA. So the DNA is, in, is bathed in the environment associated with the <coughs> things that you're thinking about. So guess what the DNA does? It, some of the genes in the DNA are activated and some are deactivated. DNA has 25,000 genes, right? roughly 25,000 genes. I like to describe it like, a, you know those Christmas tree lights you get? The ones that flash like that. But let's say you've got 25,000 Christmas tree lights and they're wrapped up like that in a big long, you know you can wrap them round in a big long twisting kind of thing. 25,000 of them. That's a bit like your DNA and the lights are just randomly going off. Although they're not randomly going on and off, they're responding to their environment. Many, some of them actually are pre-programmed to the, the usual the stuff that your body has to do to stay alive. But many of them, many of these lights have gone on and off. In this big long chain of Christmas tree lights, they've gone on and off in response to what you think about and how you feel. Because what you think about produces neuropeptides, which change the surface of the cell. The cell adapts, just like I, my skin would go darker or lighter, depending on if I was bathed in hot sunshine or Scotland, none at all. <laughs> uh, the DNA is also bathed in a different light. It's bathed in a different light of consciousness, so to speak, or a different type of information that's produced by what you think about. So some of these light bulbs go on, and some of them go off in response to what you think about. It's incredible. A recent study done by Harvard scientists looked at meditation, and they looked at an eight-week basic course of meditation. They took blood samples before and after. Now, this is Harvard scientists. This is real. Front end, this is the best meditation research I have ever discovered. It came out, about, it came out in the middle of 2008, and I got it, and I, I, I think I'm one of the first people to get it and put it in a book, because it was a week before my new book went to press, and I got it, <laughs> straight out the book. But basically, they took blood samples before and after, and they looked at the 25,000 genes, and they found that 1,561 of those genes had been affected directly through eight weeks of meditation. Amazing, isn't it? And all, of you, all these people did was, th was breathe, they went and they listened. The simple form of meditation is to breathe, but you, you do it on purpose. You pay attention to your breathing, you just go like that. And you produce what's called in the body the relaxation response. It's a physiological response to meditation or prayer. Some people pray instead, mantra, mantric prayer. Uh, some people did basic yoga or tai chi or qigong but all of these things like meditation produced the relaxation response and when scientists took the blood samples before and after after eight weeks 1561 genes <laughs> that's amazing and why is that because the environment around the dna is now changed because of the different way that you're thinking because you're concentrating on something instead of a hundred things what an, I need to go to the shopping, I need to get that, I need to pick up and I need to do that and that and that. And we're not thinking of all these things in the, or thinking about the past, what we need to do now, <coughs> and how the future is going to be. We're actually thinking about the moment and listening to our breathing. Or, or